Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to deal with a comment that was left on this video. All right. Where I responded to the believers of the way breaking down the MOTB. Now in this video, um, we went through their points and broke it down. But um, uh, this particular commenter, I don't know whether it's a brother or a sister, says Sharla W.Y.A. So not sure if it's a brother or a sister, but this comment was left and it says it would be very helpful to do a follow up video titled the mark of the Lord versus the mark of the beast. This would help in cutting through this fog of confusion out there and Yasha Allah. And it shouldn't be a fog of confusion because we always break down, you know, the mark of uh, the Lord versus the mark of the beast. It was broken down in this video. We always go into it, but maybe. A more straightforward video would help as um, some videos could tend to be you know a little all over the place but um to get right to it when you deal with Ezekiel 9 and 4 you know Ezekiel sees a vision of the slaughter that was coming to the leaders of Israel who were dealing in a temple okay when you go to Ezekiel the eighth chapter he sees a vision of the abominations and the adultery that was going on in the temple with the leaders, all right, of Judah, all right, which were Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, were going off. You know, they were doing all kind of wickedness in the temple. Okay, and you know, the Lord gave uh, Ezekiel visions of all of that wickedness that they were doing, and we know that the Babylonians, all right, were uh, sent. To judge Israel at that time. All right. But before it happened, the Lord sent prophets to warn them. All right. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and others. So as he's seeing a vision of the evil that they're doing. All right. Ezekiel 8 and 10. So I went and saw and behold every form of creeping thing and abominable beasts and the idols of the house of Israel. All right. Portrayed on the wall roundabout. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And um, when you get to the ninth chapter, all right, he sees a vision of slaughter. Now, when you get Ezekiel 9, basically, you know, the Lord is commanding angels or a particular angel who has an ink horn by his side, meaning he's recording the sins of these uh, wicked leaders in Israel. Okay. He, he gives him this command in Ezekiel 9 and 4, all right? And it says the angel was clothed in linen, right? And when you read Ezekiel 9 and 4, which is where you get the mark of the Lord, because when we bring out the MOTB, all right, what these particular camps will do is they'll go to any scripture that says mark or marked, all right? And they'll make the case, well, is this talking about a microchip? Is this talking about a micro C hip? And no, it's not talking about a micro C hip. All right. The only scripture where it's talking about a micro C hip. All right. Is Revelation 13. You know, Revelation 14 talks about it. Revelation 20 goes into it. Those beheaded for it. Revelation 16 talks about a grievous, you know, sword that's going to, you know, you know, uh, be placed upon those who, who take, you know, the uh, haragma, you know, and it's various scriptures that go into the, the actual MOTB. That John the Revelator saw being, you know, um, you know, passed as legislation that you would have to get that in order to buy and sell. We could see this world going to that, but we'll get into that. But when you go to the scriptures like this, Ezekiel 9 and 4, or, you know, scriptures where it says, mark them that cause division, or if I sin, you mark me. Those scriptures ain't talking about, all right, the MOTB. Now, when you get here. Ezekiel 9 and 4, which is talking about the mark of the Lord as the question is, all right, or the statement said we should do a follow-up video dealing with the mark of the Lord versus the mark of the beast. When you deal with the mark of the Lord, 
here in Ezekiel 9 and 4, it says, And the Lord said unto him, to this angel, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others, he said, in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. All right. He said to the other angels, I believe it was uh, six angels overall. Yep, six men. So it was six angels overall. All right. And he told, you know, basically going, he, he gave them the order to go and smite. Okay. Go through the midst of Israel. All right. Jerusalem. Okay. Where Jake was just being rebellious and smite. It says, neither have ye pity. Let not your eyes spare. Okay. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women but come not any man on whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary begin at the temple so they began killing the 70 leaders all right and we just saw what the 70 leaders were doing in ezekiel the eighth chapter they were what getting into that adultery all right which this is a vision of the judgment that was to come as the lord sent jeremiah all right, he sent Ezekiel to warn of the coming destruction. See? Now, when you go to this word, Mark, in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, okay? As we always do, that word is Thawa. All right, Thawa. Okay, desire, Mark. All right, Mark as a sign of exemption from judgment. All right, which is a foreshadowing of the elect. All right, who are covered under the blood of Yahweh Shai. All right, being what? Exempt from judgment. Okay. Now, the word Thawa. Okay. Limit, mark, mark, set a mark. That mark is dealing with exemption from judgment. Now, the Tha in the Hebrew, which is something I, I think is pretty cool. When you go to the Tha in the Hebrew alphabet, as you can see at the bottom, it looks like a cross or it looks like an X, you know, for a signature. But Tha, it says it means cross, covenant, truth, perfection, sign, ownership, seal. See, this is a spiritual mark, all right, that is going to be placed upon men. And women and children, ultimately, but starting with the men, all right, who ultimately are in the good graces of Yahweh Ba Shimei all right, they are owned, they, they have a seal on them, they're what, all right, perfect, but they're perfect through the blood of Yahweh Shai, okay, so I thought that was, um, I always like to go into that, because that Hebrew letter for Tha goes into Tharawah, the law. You know, so ultimately this th Thawa is a is a sign of exemption from judgment. This is a spiritual mark. As you can see here, it says a signature, meaning the Lord has put his signature upon these particular souls from the foundation of the earth. Now, some precepts that can go with this. See if we can get some precepts real quick. I have a few in mind. All right. Exodus 12 and 7, and they shall take the blood and strike it upon the two uh, side posts and upon the upper door posts and of the house wherein they shall eat it. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. All right. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. All right. When I smite the land of Egypt. Okay. Because ultimately that blood represented the blood of Yahweh Shai. Okay. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and 22. Who have sealed us and given us the earnest of our spirits and our, and our hearts. The earnest of the spirit. The belief. All right. The, the faith. All right. Ephesians 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit wherein ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So the elect are sealed. All right, <clears throat> by the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, all right, being chosen from the foundation of the earth to have a particular spirit, 
all right, to stand up against wickedness. And you had particular souls back then, all right, in the book of Ezekiel, all right, at the time that the Babylon, the Neo-Babylonian Empire was on the scene, you had particular people in Israel who looked down upon the behavior of those leaders. As a matter of fact, this is Psalms 119 and 53, horror have taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. All right. And when we see our people doing all of this wickedness, we're sighing and crying. We're vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, right? That's because we've been sealed, all right, Lord willing, we continue, all right, with the seal of Yahweh Bashim Shai, which if we are of the elect, all right, we are exempt from judgment. Now, let's get the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, in the third verse. It says, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places see the mark of the most high is a spiritual mark okay esau's mark is carnal as we show you according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love see he hath chosen us before the foundation of the world having predestined us to the adoption of children by Yahweh Shah HaMashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. See? So he's predestined, predestinated particular souls to be perfect, to be blameless. Okay? <laughs> so that, you know, ultimately, as you see here, verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. See? And that's all tied to the blood of Yahweh Shai, as we know, Revelation 13 and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, worship Esau, Edom, whose names are not written in the book of the life of the land slain from the foundation of the world. So that blood, all right, which ultimately would be shed, all right, that was already those souls who were going to be tied to being perfected under that blood, all right were chosen from the beginning. The Lord already knew and understood, all right, that Yahweh Shai was going to have to shed his blood. And he chose the particular spirits and souls from the beginning, which is a spiritual blessing. See? That they are blameless, all right? The lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You were chosen from the foundation of the world. John 17 In 24, Father, I will also that they whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. And those particular souls were chosen to be with him. Okay? You have the teachers, all right? And then you have, all right, verse 17, neither I pray for these alone, but also them which shall believe on me through their word. So those who take heed to the words of the prophets, all right, they have ears to hear, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So the elect, okay, um, are chosen from the foundation of the earth to be blameless. They're covered under the blood of Yahweh Shai. Okay, and that's ultimately what that mark in Ezekiel 9 and 4 represents. Okay, exempt from judgment. You see, their sins won't be tied to them because they, they are special spirits. Let's get that in Psalms 32. Okay, Psalms 32 and 1. It says, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sins is covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord imputed not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile. See, Esau doesn't have this kind of power. Only the Most High through Yahweh Shai has this kind of power, man. Okay? To where your spirit, okay, is, is, is automatically tied to a victory. It's already, it's automatically tied to being of that, all right, ride or die body to where you exempt from judgment. And the, 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 the true judgment is going to come, all right, when Yahweh Shai returns, as it says, the second death 
have no power over them. Let's get that. Okay. So this is a spiritual mark. <laughs> All right. The second death being at destruction. Revelation 26. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection, the first dominion on such the second death, destruction, all right, have no power, but they shall be priests of the Most High and of Yahweh Shai and shall reign with him a thousand years. They're going to be a part of that, all right, first dominion, that first government to establish, all right, righteousness in the earth, that first a thousand year period where Yahweh Shai and his men, all right, will ultimately establish order in the earth. And after them, you have, all right, the large multitude. After the 144,000, all right, you have the large multitude, all right? I believe that was one of the precepts to this. Let's see here. Yep, Revelation 14 and 1. This is a good one, and I look. All right. And lo, a lamb stood upon the Mount Sinai, and with him 144,000. That's the governing body. All right. Having the, uh, their father's name written in their forehead. They're sealed. That signature. OK. Of ownership is on them. OK. They are the ones, the first. All right. To be brought into that new covenant, the first resurrection. They are perfect, but through the blood of Yahweh Shai. It's the blood of Yahweh Shai that makes them perfect. It's the blood of Yahweh Shai, just like it was the blood of the uh, lamb, okay, in Egypt that exempt you from judgment. So the, the mark of the Lord, the seal of the Lord is all spiritual and it's given unto you from the foundation of the earth. You were handpicked to get a victory, okay? That's all that's talking about, man. Okay, the mark of the Most High is a spiritual mark, all right, that ultimately, all right, uh, exempts you from judgment. See, and that's given from the foundation of the earth. Okay, the, the, you're vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Right, like a lot. Second Peter's 2, all right, and 6, and turn in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And to ashes condemn them with the overthrow, making them an ensample of those that should live ungodly afterward. See, it's an example of what's going to happen now. Just like in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, what's getting ready to happen here with our people into all of this wickedness and idol worship and being being demons. Okay, there's a, a an elect, there's a remnant, okay, who have ultimately been, uh, uh, you know, chosen from the foundation of the earth. And they have a seal on them. The signature of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, that's what is the, the, the name of the Most High and His Son, is in their head. They're sealed. It's not talking about a carnal mark. This is a spiritual mark that only the Most High through His Son can give. And deliver just a lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. See? Uh, 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 those who sigh and cry at the abominations. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord, let's read this in the NLT. So you see, the Lord knows how to rescue godly people from their trials, even while the wicked, all right, under punishment, even while keeping the wicked under punishment until the day of the final judgment. So when the final judgment comes, there are particular souls that are going to be what? All right marked all right ultimately chosen from the foundation of the earth covered under the blood of Yahweh Shai yep Psalm 72 and 13 speaking of Yahweh Shai he shall spare the poor and needy and shall save the souls of the needy he shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence and precious shall their blood be in his sight see he's gonna redeem them all right for their lives are precious unto him and it's not anything that, you know, that they could do for themselves. This is a spiritual mark, seal, all right, having the seal of the Most High put up on them. See? So, this, the, the, you know, the, 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 that's the, the best way to break that down, you know, at the end of the day, 
is the most highest mark is spiritual. Now, when you deal with the mark of the beast, and there's so many other scriptures we can get on that. If you need more, um, you know, just ask. But when you get Revelation 13, this mark here of the beast, which the beast is a carnal man. As a matter of fact, when you look up this word beast, it's therion, metaphorically a brutal, bestial, savage, and ferocious man. All right? Now, Revelation, the 13th chapter, all right, in the 15th verse, I'll start at 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. We always go into what the image of the beast is, the ways of the ancient Roman Empire that are born back into the earth, starting at the Renaissance until now. All right, the, the, the NWO, sin, right? The image of the beast that it should both speak and cause as many as they not, would not worship the image that they should be killed. All right, and we know that that word killed could be also separated separated from fellowship with the beast you're not able to do this you're not able to do that all right but then it also goes into he calls it all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads this mark here is different see the mark of the most high has nothing to do with buying and selling see what esau is making people to do is vow to his image except you know, sodomite behavior, you know, to be okay with this, this wicked world, you know, to take up on the ways of Rome, the Greco-Roman Empire, which really that goes back to Babel, Egypt, Canaan. All right. All of this evil, you, you, you know, you, you accept those ways. Okay. And many of our people, as is written in Second Thessalonians, shall believe a lie. As a matter of fact, let's get there real quick. That's dealing with the... the the image. Let's get Second Thessalonians chapter two. All right, and nine, and eight, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, pseudoscience, miracles, technology, science, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall stand with a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. They're going to wonder after the beast. They're going to bow to his image. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see that? They bow to his image and they're going to take, a lot of them are going to also take that charagma. Because this charagma seals the deal. Okay? Esau is not the most high. He's, he's not a spiritual man. He does have, as the scriptures say, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's one of the precepts he brought out. Let's get that in Ephesians, the uh, sixth chapter. Okay, Ephesians 6 and 10. For we wrestle not against flesh. 12, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this world. The rulers of this, the darkness of this world are Edomites. But they deal, all right, with those left-hand spirits, all right, and wickedness in high places, all right. Again, we just read in 2 Thessalonians, this man, let's get 2 Thessalonians again. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9 in the NLT, this man will come to do the work of Satan. See? Satan is in the spiritual realm, all right? But he, there, there's spirits sent by him to get things done in the planet Earth. And these elites, these witches and warlocks, they deal with that left-handed power. Just like Pharaoh and all of them they did their miracles. They were men in the flesh, but they dealt with all of that left-hand magic, man. See? And when you get verse thir uh, 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 16, and he calls it all, Okay, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a charagma in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that word, this word here, this is a physical thing. Give me one second. I have to bring it up here because uh, the uh, the uh, internet 
I don't know. I, th I think the Blue Letter Bible website went down. Then I went to another one, and it was uh, down. But as you can see here, that word haragma, if you look at the screen, it's a stamp and imprinted mark of the mark stamped upon the forehead or the right hand as a badge of the followers of the anti-Messiah. This takes you back to an ancient system, right? Now, as we showed you, the Greeks, the Romans, even the Egyptians branded their servants, right? What we're telling you is that this system of, of marking, right, is now a digital system. See? It says a thing carved, a graven work, an idolatrous image. This has nothing to do with the mark, okay, in, the, um, in Ezekiel 9 and 4. There's two totally different topics, two totally different situations. This right here is something that's going to be given unto you by the beast, all right, by Esau. He's the one who runs this, this, this system. See, Esau is the end of the world. This marks the end of his rulership, all right, when you see him, all right, bringing about this technology. Because the scripture said he would come with miracles. Right now, he's boasting in the fact that he can, you know, make the blind to see, the lame to walk, you know, make people who, who, who are dumb, deaf, you know, he can now make them, you know, he can heal them through his means, okay, without saying so much. And that, you know, uh, that neuro thing that Elon Musk is talking about, that's a part of that. But then we also see technology where they're telling you, all right, this will be the new way all right, of buying and selling. So there is a difference clearly in, all right, the mark of the most high in the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is a carnal thing. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's see if it, it, I go into it here. Let's see here. Let's go back. Let's see here. I'll show you a few different words for Mark in the Holy Scriptures, but we're going to listen to a little bit more of them. And then we'll close it out. But the word haragma, all right, is um, ultimately um, a stamp and imprinted mark of the stamp on the forehead or the right hand as a badge of the followers of the anti-Messiah. Different uh, nations, like the, the uh, East Indians, they have the dot on their forehead. You know, that's for their God, you know, in ancient time. You can read down there, it says, from the same as a scratch or etching stamp badge of servitude. See, you can see that if you look at the bottom of the screen. In the Strong's definition, is a badge of servitude, graven muscle. It's physical. You, you would put a tattoo or a mark on you as a badge. The Greeks did it. We found out the Egyptians did it. They had a system of branding. Okay, look it up. Right. See, this is a spiritual Egypt, but as you can see here, small branding irons from ancient Egypt were likely used to mark the skin of human slaves. Okay? The Greeks did it. You know, the, the, the Romans did it. See, so if that which is then is now, doesn't the scripture say that, that which is then is now? See if we can pull that up. Is that Ecclesiastes? Yeah, I think this app is down. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that have been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. So how is this going to be played out in this time? See? See? Is going to be through a physical thing, man, which we see being implemented and, and, and brought out, man. Okay, point blank, period. So there's a different, and and then the the uh, the spiritual mark had nothing to do with you being able to buy and sell when you got Ezekiel nine.
So there's a clear difference between the mark of the most high and the mark of the beast. Point blank period. Okay, he's bringing about that mark for wicked purposes, man. Okay, and we know as you go into that word stigma, see if I bring it out here at any point. I mean, you know. I mean, pretty much it's broken down in the video. You know, it's broken down in the video, but. Yeah, the app just ain't, you know, the, the, the blue letter Bible is down. So it's only so much I can go into. But um, even the website is down. Let's see here. Yeah, I go through the different meanings of, you know, Mark in certain scriptures. Boom, there we go. The branded or pricked cut into their bodies. This is Let's back it up. Not medical information to indicate what master or general they belong to. All right, you're going to be called by his name. They remember at the time of the Greeks, Antiochus wanted the people to be called by Antiochians. Don't call yourself Jews, call yourself Antiochians. Okay, he's trying to ultimately put his name on you and say ultimately he possesses you. You're his creation. All right? And this is the system he plans on setting up or the number of his name. So it goes into the number of his name. All right? Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast. It is the number of a man, the man of sin, the beast man. And his number is 600, three score six, the triple six, as we see embedded in his system. Okay? It's ultimately chai size stigma. Right? And we broke it down. X is the first letter in chai or Christ. Right? X is chai, all right, the first, all right, letters in anointed or Christos or Christ. Like you have Xmas, all right, it means the death, mass, death, X. But the triple six, the name of the beast, all right, and the number of his name is what is spoken of here in Revelation, the 14th chapter. In the 11th verse, whosoever have the victory over the mark of his name and the mark of the beast is tied. So you have chai, size, stigma, stigma. Stigma, there we go. All right, which is another word that can be used for prick or mark. There's a mark pricked or branded upon the body to ancient oriental usage. This is an ancient custom where slaves and soldiers bore the name or stamp of their master or commander branded or pricked cut into their bodies. This is not medical information. To indicate what master or general they belong to. And there were even some devotees who stamped themselves in this way with the token of their gods. There you go. So again, if that which is then is now, and Egypt did it, the Greeks did it, the Romans did it, and this is a new spiritual Egypt, how is that gonna how's that system? All right, or the mark of consecration, you can look that up. All right, gonna be played out. All right, you can look up the mark of consecration. All right, something you you uh the word consecration, let's just look that up real quick. The action of making or declaring something typically sacred. Esau is going to make you, you're going to declare him as your God, man. Something you're ordaining, something that's sacred. Right? So there was a, a, a mark of consecration in the ancient time where you would get, you know, particular things put on you. Imprints. Okay. Some people get a cross tattooed on them. Well, see, Esau's taking that system of the ancient world to a whole new level, man. So again, Salakia, this 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 site went down, so I wasn't able to go into the the you know the Greek, but we got it all. Hopefully, y'all edified. There's a difference between the mark of the Most High and the mark of the beast, Shalom.